Welcome to the latest episode of Construction Week's Expert Interview Series, which brings to you some of the most well-known names from the region's built environment, who talk about everything from technologies to challenges, as well as what the future beholds for the construction industry. With us today is Payman Mohajer, the Group Managing Director of WME, an independent multidisciplinary consultancy with operations across the UAE, Singapore, India, and the UK. Thank you so much for joining us today, Payman. It's my pleasure to be with you today. All right, to get started with, so in a post-pandemic world, the design and construction sector is obviously all set to witness a transformation, you know, in its move to adapt to the new normal. What will this mean for WME and how have things changed the way projects were delivered? To be honest with you, we are the... Uh, at the beginning of this journey, um, this transformation journey, which is um, nobody had expected and we were all in our comfort zone and suddenly pandemic has changed everything. We need to re-examine all the norms that we thought um, were acceptable by the industry and re-evaluate the um, approach to overall design. We are engineers, so our, my uh, perspective would be mainly from engineering point of view rather than architectural point of view, which will be to do with space planning and, and, and other stuff. But I can see, uh, because we offer a multidisciplinary uh, engineering services, which includes uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, as well as structures, civils, roads. Mm -hmm. And so those aspects, I think I can see the main one uh, to start with is the clean air ventilation systems in the buildings. Uh, that this needs to be looked at again with um, additional filtration to making sure that we can capture all these um, um, viruses or, or unwanted um, uh, flow of air in the spaces that we do not want to. Uh, then the smart designing of the building, um, integrating open spaces, bring outdoor to indoor, so the technology will move with that. Um, then hybrid spaces, um, you know, uh, work spaces, uh, living spaces uh, would be combined perhaps, uh, and use smart building technology. That that's going to be a lot more uh, prominent now um, to uh, reduce the human contact uh, with uh, you know when we want to um, use uh, the buildings. Social distancing and sensor installations becomes uh, becomes a norm uh, in the future. I think perhaps we won't see so many uh, light switches in the buildings uh, or, or on the elevators uh, when you're entering. And then beam revolution will, will continue to uh, move on. And I think we saw a good example how in Wuhan the hospital was built in 10 days, which, which was really the power of beam technology. And retrofitting uh, the existing buildings to uh, rethink energy efficiency and, and all that. So, this, this is where I think the future will be. And um, the, as, as far as we are concerned, uh, we offer AVIT, um, uh, which is the, uh, uh, to do with the internet of the building, operation of the building. And that's where we're gonna be very busy changing our approach to the design and bringing in more um, sensor operated doors, uh, you know, light switches, thermostats, um, and then where there is high traffic buttons, they need to be swept away and replaced by motion activation or voice command. Mm -hmm. And um, so th these are all, uh, we are working with the, uh, with the industry manufacturers to develop um, the new uh, systems that we want to introduce uh, to our clients uh, in order to help them to navigate our way through the future pandemics. Because I think this is only at the beginning uh, and this will come back again and again. And we need to be prepared. Um, and consider this as a new norm. The other thing is high-rise buildings. I think um, we love high-rise buildings. We design a lot of high-rise buildings, but we realize now that um, perhaps we need to make sure that uh, opportunities for transferring that virus is reduced by, again, uh, introducing, um, um, introducing more um, sensors in the building so, so that it's touchless uh, operation and creating more um, open floors so that people, you know, it's not all confined spaces. There's more podiums, more um, spaces that people can, and basically, you know, reducing the densification. So density should be reduced in, in buildings. Uh, so again, these are the things which 
are evolving and architect will be taking the lead, but we will also give our uh, opinions as how do we uh, be able to improve our designs in dealing with future pandemics. Um, that, that's how I see the main impact for the, for the future. And I think um, the, uh, there will be retrofit of filtration systems in the buildings. So we have to make sure that um, the air filtration system is such that um, does not uh, contribute to the um, infectious, uh, infection of the, uh, of the occupants of the building and, and uh, starts the spread of virus, um, it stops the spread of virus. And the same thing with office environment. Again, we look at that and, um, and I think that it's not just technology, but it's actually the way we think, the way we operate, the way we work, they all needs to change in order to, for us to, the office spaces um, are going to change. We don't require the spaces that we needed in the past. So you, you did make some really interesting points about technological adoption and you know how retrofitting has obviously helped during these times and also spoke about you know how stakeholder collaboration is important. So how according to you, you know, uh, has stakeholder collaboration now more than ever helped, you know, develop sustainable building designs for the future? We need to make a change in our approach to our um, designs and to our environment and I think to care. Uh, mm -hmm. about our planet. Yeah. Um, so sustainability has definitely taken the center point in our design. Yeah. Everything we do revolves around how do we make sure that the solutions that we offer are environmental friendly and they will not um, um, sort of have a negative impact on, on the environment. And we, are, uh, we openly discuss these things with our client in a proactive way rather than a reactive way. We try to educate them about options, sustainable options, even though they may have to contribute a little bit more initially, but we sort of explain to them that the running cost and the operational cost eventually will be beneficial uh, to adapt a more sustainable uh, system. So when talking about sustainability, obviously reducing carbon emissions is something that is really, really important. So how is WME remaining committed to the net zero carbon buildings agenda across all the projects that you deliver? I think sustainability is the is a mother word that, that covers all the you know, energy efficiency and um, the net zero carbon uh, as well, which is part of what I would say a sustainability initiative or approach which we have adopted. Some of the projects that we are doing are extremely interesting and we are doing it as a lead platinum a certification and they're unique projects. The UAE Pavilion, for example, or SRG Tower in, um, in Dubai, which are um, basically lead platinum. And that is quite an um, achievement for, for a design to be able to deliver uh, such projects in, in such climate that we have in this part of the world. So you spoke about the UA Pavilion earlier and how you attained the LEED certification for that. So could you talk to me about, uh, you know, WME's involvement uh, across other pavilions and other projects within the Expo 2020 Dubai? We are very proud to have been part of uh, the engineering uh, part of the UA Pavilion and work with, um, you know, um, fantastic architect, um, Mr. Calatrava, uh, Santiago Calatrava. And we've learned working together we learned a lot and it's been very challenging and it's something that we are very proud of because it has been extremely complicated to be able to deliver so much detail so much complexity in such a confined space and really i'll go back to bim technology which how bim technology has helped us to be able to deliver uh, this uh, pavilion this very complex pavilion and UA pavilion is one of our first pavilion that we started and then the architect came to us by recommendation they were looking um, you know for top two engineers in town top three engineers and they interviewed everyone and they selected us as the engineers uh, for the building so we are very happy to have been selected to design uh, this national iconic building the UAE pavilion for for the country and we also have worked uh, with Luxembourg Pavilion and uh, Austria Pavilion. Uh, we have designed those. Um, Emirates Pavilion, Operation Pavilions, we've been involved. Uh, and so we are not only engineering, we also provide the architect of record 
submission to authorities and following up, and at the same time supervising the projects on, the, on site to make sure that what we have designed is delivered uh, correctly. Uh, moving ahead and, you know, towards the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, you know, where the nature of entertainment and tourism sector is obviously evolving with more and more cinemas coming in place and development of the GIGA projects. So what does uh, WME's presence look like in the Kingdom? We have been quite involved in this sector. It's something that um, it wasn't designed, but it just happened. Uh, we were um, uh, we were asked to help the WAP cinemas. When the cinemas started rolling out in Saudi Arabia, we were one of the first consultants we were asked to design uh, cinemas and entertainment centers around the cinemas in Saudi Arabia. So we've been quite busy in that sector and we've actually delivered um, cinemas were open and, um, and we just the numbers are increasing on a on a, on a weekly basis. So so we, we are quite busy. But at the same time, because we've been involved in water parks mm-hmm. uh, and theme parks in Dubai, uh, we are asked to uh, to contribute to the design uh, of such projects in Saudi Arabia. The other thing which has helped us uh, to be uh, busy in Saudi Arabia is our license. We have a we have a full license in Saudi Arabia. We have a WME KSA, and we have a local partner. Uh, and that has given us a lot of traction with international practice architects who are looking for engineers who are both on the ground and also they are international engineers. So that has asked, actually uh, has uh, given us dividends. So we are quite happy that um, we are there already and we will be strengthening our office in Saudi Arabia. All the best to you and your team for all the further projects and obviously to achieve the goal. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Payman. It was wonderful having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. And many thanks again. To our viewers who've been tuned in, don't forget to hit the like button and share the video with your friends and colleagues. We will come back soon with another interesting episode in the expert interview series. Until then, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.